how do you create impact, but how do you do profit and how does it cohesively work together? You know, I remember just going to people and asking for investment or asking for donations, like talking on both sides and both whatever narrative I was saying, they were like, well, you either, you got to figure out what you're doing. Are you doing impact? Like you're just a nonprofit or, you know, are you wanting to to make profit? Because if you're going to, yeah, if you're going to make an impact, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, but there is that completely limiting false belief that you're either a do-gooder and you're going to be poor and starve, or you are going to really, you know, uh, make money and then you have to screw everybody over. You're like, is there's just, right. it. and it's yeah, still that's this the weird dynamic. And I work a lot also in like the business as missions world. And there's this really weird dynamic of like, you have to be like this martyr, like this scarcity mindset. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like this all needs to change because like, if you're not healthy as a leader, that's not healthy for the organization and the company. Right. And so that's really where the school of ethical impact was began. I think the pains that we're experiencing now with these mega corps and, you know, these quote unquote supply chain issues, you know, and stuff like that, that are happening. Um, I think a lot of this is we are seeing pushback from this very small handful of elites against the growing new tide. And they're not going to stop it because most people just want to have a really good life. They want to provide their value out to the world and they want to do it in in very specific ways. And more and more people are understanding the value of enough because they see the rot when you have people that never know what enough is. And it used to be, we're talking about what, 40 years ago, uh, 1980s, mm-hmm. you know, there's never enough. You, you got to have more greed is good. You know, coffee is for closers. Let's, you know, just unless you, if you're a winner, mm-hmm. then you are basically a pariah. You're a fungus. You're going to take over everything. And and there's never enough. And if you're ever happy, well, then you've just got out of your comfort zone. And we started start, started thinking of these things, you know, get out of your comfort zone, uh, break through your, your, your box and your limiting beliefs. And all this was pushing in a mindset of excess, but a mindset of scarcity. There's not enough. So if you want enough, you're going to have to be very aggressive on it. And it didn't work. It, it didn't work spectacularly. It only worked for a very small amount of people who are willing to sacrifice everything to get it to work. And by everything, I mean there's... Change can be a terrifying thing. Fears of not being good enough, of things not working out, or our own limiting beliefs taking over. But the wave of transformation doesn't have to be so scary. When you are connected to your power and trust yourself, you can surf that wave to everything you've ever dreamed. In this workshop, experts Claire, Kaula, and Jennifer will show you how to become that tsunami surfer through practices of self-awareness, self-leadership, and self-trust. Souls. Why aren't we radically listening to what's happening here? And why aren't we actually like um, leveraging what's here? And at the same time of like, again, but as the entrepreneur, like I always felt like I always sacrificed me. And in, and now it's been interesting in the last five years to finally like, right. Like, no, like I'm, I'm just as I'm paying them, like I need to be paid. But when you start from like, um, even that missional side of that mission, it's just a very interesting dynamic of, I have these very polar opposite groups or like this mission side is like, scarcity and martyrdom, whatever side. And then this other is like, no, profit is good. Profit is good. Profit is good. I don't understand the impact and why that's part of your bottom line. Cause that's screwing over all of your costs, but still I get the profit, you know? And so it's like, <laughs> I'm always balancing these, both of these worlds. And I'm like, Oh, this, like, you know, like this needs to be a new narrative. Now it has been a narrative. Now the, and the interesting part is I've been in this narrative for a long time. And so when I step out of it, like when we talk, it's like, we know what we're talking about when, but when you step out of it and like, not a lot of, it's still 
so new to so many people. Cause I think, you know, I'm, this is my community. These are my people. I'm constantly talking about impact profit and all this cool stuff. And then I step out of it. I'm like, Oh, we have so much more to do in educating the general public of what this actually is. And then there's so many other people starting to add to this collective of, it doesn't have to be these extremes. And these extremes are actually the same thing because the extremes need each other to survive. If you don't have a slave class w- willing to sacrifice their life, their sanity, their health, their everything, and not make money because you have indoctrinated them into the fact that if they make a penny, then they're evil like you, wink, wink. Well, if you don't have that, then, then it, it, it affects it affects this. And that's what we need to do. We need to destabilize extremists on either end and bring people back into the fold of enough of true abundance, true worth and value to each other. And if the conversations continue to talk about this and expect this and push people to want this, then we can accomplish anything. <laughs>